You're listening to Ask Dr. Jake. My name is Dr. Jake Tucker. I'm the owner and founder here at Good Life Family Chiropractic, and we're coming to you today with another message of health, hope, and healing. And so, you know, I, I have to do this every week because, you know, it's, it's just transformed my life. And with what I've experienced with my health, you know, in the, the mindset and the culture shift and everything, I, I don't want to do this because it, it almost seems sacrilegious, but the only greater transformation I've seen in my life besides getting married and besides coming to Christ was making this mindset shift in how our culture thinks about health. It's really just transformational. And I, I saw no better example of this than when Ezekiel stopped breathing. So I've got three kids, right? Many of you know this. Many of you who've been listening to this show on a daily basis for a while now, uh, you've heard me talk about my kids and just how awesome they are and how much I love to play with them and the things that they do to me and the things that they do to my wife and I, how little sleep we're getting. Um, but the, the baby, uh, he's always been the easiest uh, until he wasn't. Um, he was about five and a half months old and just healthiest little kid you'd ever meet. I mean, he was, he was getting everything. I mean, you talk about a kid that doesn't lack for anything, attention, love, nutrition, time with grandparents, social skills. I mean, he was over a month ahead on virtually every single one of his milestones. I mean, he was, you know, starting to get to his hands and knees, getting ready to crawl. And, uh, yeah, I remember very distinctly, it was a Wednesday morning. Wednesday is one of our longest days in the office. And I just gotten done with a, uh, or not finished, but almost finished with a Wednesday morning. I had a few patients left to get adjusted and examine the exam room, but I had a second to stop and breathe and think. And I, so I went to the front um, where my staff had just stepped away for a second. I knew they needed a restroom break and the phone rang. And so I saw it was my wife. So I picked up and before I even greeted her, she said, Zeke stopped breathing. I said, what's going on? She said, we need to go to the hospital. He stopped breathing. And so I, I dropped everything. I told my staff to let the patients know, I'm sorry, but I, I can't be there anymore that morning and that I had to go to the hospital. And I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what happened. I don't know if he had choked on something or what, but when I got to the hospital, they started to tell me what had happened. And he had apparently gone from his back, getting ready to go down for a nap. He flipped himself over to his stomach. And as he did so, he let out a squawk something that he wasn't used to. Uh, they weren't used to hearing that with him. And so they immediately went over and checked at him. And when just, just the few seconds it took him to get there, he had stopped breathing. And he, I mean, they freaked out, but they, they were well-trained. They knew what to do. They started, you know, trying to stimulate him and get him to respond. He was non-responsive. So they started doing CPR and they started doing rescue breathing. And by the time the, the paramedics got there, they had done two rounds of rescue breathing and he was finally responsive again. He was crying a little bit, but he was still having difficulty breathing and he started to seize. His hands started shaking, his eyes started going off to one side. So they transported him over to St. E's and I got there very soon after. I don't think this has been more than 15 minutes since he first stopped breathing, but when I got there, I saw the same problems. I saw what it was doing to him. I saw the fear in his eyes and I, I saw the seizures happening. I saw the difficulty he was having in taking a breath. And so I went to him. And while I was hearing what was going on, as my wife talked to the doctors and the daycare workers, I just instinctively went to his neck. And there at the top, there was a misalignment of his atlas. Atlas is the first cervical vertebra in your neck. It's supposed to surround and protect your brainstem and keep the, the, the brainstem and the cranial nerves intact and protected while also giving motion to the head and neck. And his atlas was shoved over to the side so far that I could li literally feel it on the outside of his neck, just how far it was shoved off to the side. And so I did you know, what any good chiropractor who's trained in pediatrics would do, and that's start to adjust that back into place. Now, nobody noticed me doing it because the, an adjustment on a baby is so gentle and so light that you'd never notice it. Only the baby notices. And most of the time, they, you know, if they're sleeping, they sleep through it. If they're awake, they kind of laugh with it because of the tension that it releases in their spine. But he started to relax. He started to breathe normally. His eyes stopped 
jerking over to the side. His hands stopped jerking. He calmed down in my arms. And I was praying for him. I was praying for the doctors. I was praying for me and my wife and our family and everything that was going to happen over these next couple of days. Because even though I found that, we still hadn't, we didn't know what had happened that set this off. We didn't know if there was a medical cause for concern in his body or if this was simply a matter of dysfunction and a lack of ability to adapt to his environment. I found out in the next couple of hours what had happened that morning. And apparently my son um, had decided to roll off the bed uh, while my wife was getting our daughter ready. And fortunately, uh, she caught him before he hit the floor, but she caught him by the head and neck kind of awkwardly. And because my daughter is cantankerous and, and really just uh, when it comes to doing things that she doesn't want to do, just very disagreeable sometimes, uh, she was kind of trying to kick her pants off and happened to kick him in the head and neck as my wife was catching him. And so it, it made sense to me exactly what happened. His atlas had shifted over, had put in enough disruption in his brainstem that he wasn't able to adapt to this environment. And when he had gone from his back to his stomach, that's when it just snapped. It just snapped out of place. And it was the adjustment and the consecutive adjustments throughout the next few days that helped to realign him and restore him. Now, over the next three days, we also, we went from St. E's where we ended up taking a CT scan of his brain, a chest x-ray to see what his lungs were doing. We did a COVID test. We did we did every test you can name. I mean, we went to Children's in Omaha. We did an MRI. We did spinal taps. We did cultures on his blood just to see what was going on, see if there was something more sinister going on than just a misalignment of his spine. But the misalignment of his spine was enough. And now most of us are walking around with misalignments of our spine. We don't even realize they're there. Most misalignments of the spine, over 80% of them are completely asymptomatic. You will not feel it, but they're so sinister. And I thank God that my son had the response that he did. And I thank God that I had the training that I had, but even more so, I thank God that I went through a very similar issue when I was a baby. Yeah, you know, my mom brought me home from the hospital at you know two days old, clean bill of health. Two weeks later, I'm getting my well check, another clean bill of health. But that night, I quit breathing for the first time. Instead of seizing, I just quit breathing, slowly turned blue, and just with a look of desperation in my eyes, just let my mom know that something was wrong. Couldn't even cry. She got me breathing again, got me over to the emergency room, and you know, they, they just watched me all night. And they watched as I quit breathing 14 times that night. And so they, they did what they're trained to do. They started looking for disease. They started looking for something they could diagnose. They started sending me to specialists when they failed at diagnosing me. The specialists couldn't diagnose me either. So they went, sent me to even more renowned specialists. And over the course of the next six months, I went to over a dozen different specialists, all of whom were looking for an answer, couldn't find an answer, ended up at the University of Michigan Children's Hospital, and they couldn't even tell my mom what had happened. Finally, through all this, you know, my mom's best friend was telling her, you know, you should try a chiropractor, you know, get looked at by a chiropractor, see what's going on, see if there's anything interrupting his nervous system. And finally, after seven times, she took me and that chiropractor trained just the same way I am. He took one look at my neck, one look at the way I was holding my head and knew exactly what was wrong. My atlas was shoved over the side and twisted around my brainstem and interfering with the ability of my lungs to adapt and overcome the pressure to the nervous system. That intelligence that God placed inside my brain that says, take a breath, it was no longer able to express itself. And so my lungs failed to adapt and I stopped breathing. But because that chiropractor intervened and more importantly, because my mom's best friend finally convinced her to get me to a chiropractor, I was able to start taking normal breaths again, transform my life. And that's why I do what I do. I, I didn't know I was going to be a chiropractor. I, I, until I became a chiropractor. I didn't know why I became a chiropractor until after I heard that story, which was actually after I got to chiropractic school. It was by God's grace that I ended up there. It's by God's grace that I'm here today. It's by God's grace that I was in the right place at the right time with the right training to intervene for my son. Because we went through three days with St. E's and Children's in Omaha, of going through the, the best pediatric specialists in the world for all I know.
We have one of the best medical facilities in the world in our backyard. And none of them could tell me what was going on, that he would start a seizure or that he would quit breathing. But when I told them what I found in the spine, they just nodded politely. Some of them opened their eyes a little bit wider because they didn't have that level of understanding of what happens inside the nervous system. And that's exactly what I'm trained in, exactly what I specialize in. And so if you're sick and tired of doing the same old things, just covering up symptoms with medication, drugs and surgery being the only option for you, diagnoses being guessed at, but the cause never being found, then I encourage you to pick up the phone and call my office today, 531-289-7100. Again, that's 531-289-7100. My staff and I are standing by to take your phone call and help walk you through setting up and exam in our office this week, what that would look like and exactly how much that would cost. I'll tell you how much it would cost if you went to Omaha to get the same level of testing done that we do here in our office. It's multiple tens of thousands of dollars and they didn't provide any answers. In just two minutes with my hands, I was able to find the cause of the problem in my son. With 30 minutes with you, we'll do a higher level of testing than I, would, than I had access to in that hospital. And we'll do that at a 50% discount for the first five callers today. And that will be a, a full postural exam, range of motion in every single joint in your spine. We'll look at, uh, you know, I'll actually feel your spine and see where I can see it being out. And then from there, I'll do a digital nerve scan. I'll actually look to see how your nervous system, especially the sympathetic nervous system, is functioning across your spine and see how those electrical signals are getting through the organ cells and tissues. And then lastly, and maybe most importantly, we'll determine how many x-rays we need of your spine. Just that testing alone would cost you multiple thousands of dollars anywhere else. But here in our office, it's normally just about $130 for that level of testing. We're gonna give you a 50% discount off of that. And if we do an adjustment on that first day, we'll also give you 50% off of that. So you're talking about $95 for what would normally cost you thousands of dollars if you're one of our first five callers today. And I do that for you because I love you first and foremost, and I want you to live to your fullest potential. And if you're sick and stuck, and can't get up and can't serve God because of what you're going through, what you're suffering from, then maybe this is just the end of the test that will become part of the testimony as you serve God with your life and through your health, be able to accomplish those things. And that's what I want for you. So again, that phone number for each of you listening today, 531-289-7100. 531-289-7100. If you're listening today, you can also go to our website, goodlifefamilychiropractic.com. Find out more information about me and our office there and then what we're doing as well. You can also go there and read some of our articles on what we've got coming up. We're going to be uh, providing plenty of articles about how to stay healthy through the holidays. I'm Dr. Jake. Join me again tomorrow for another episode of Ask Dr. Jake.